we are going to be playing Minecraft, but we are going to be neither mining nor crafting. Now, I'm not the first person who's ever done this. In my case, my goal is a little bit different. It's not to beat the game, nor is it to be the best Minecraft player ever. It's really to talk about how games have certain eh, expectations in general. There are certain things that people even put as the developer intended way. People will talk about that a lot. But the whole thing with games is that you have this huge range of things that you can do. And the point of that is that you can do all of those things, that you have opportunities, that you have ideas, that you can choose to do something different than what other people are telling you to do. Survival, yeah, difficulty, hard. One of the big things that I've seen that's kind of a scary trend to me in games is that a lot of games have focused in on making themselves more linear and have less opportunity. And that's been treated as, hey, this is more cinematic. And part of the reason that scares me is that people talk about cinematic and movies in general as if they are the highest form of entertainment, which is, that's simply not true. Every form of entertainment has its own strengths and weaknesses. There is no best medium. And so the thing is that when you are creating something, you want to figure out what is the best way to tell this story? What's the best way to get across that I'm trying to get across? And I think that the whole mindset of let's make everything more into a movie is really, I just mind. I start off the game and I immediately mind. I'm going to make a new world. <laughs> That's so natural to do. Oh no, this is a terrible way to start. Maybe this is a great way because I can probably just stay up in this tree forever and I can't mind my way down. Oh no, this is actually terrible. Thank you so much for the raid, Emilex. How are you doing today? How are you all doing? Hope you are fi- <laughs> Let's try this again and hope I don't start up in a tree that I can't dig out of. There's what's called a soft launch and for a lot of companies this is, they release it to New Zealand because the culture is close to North America, but it's a smaller market and the app stores are all separate. So they release it to New Zealand. People in New Zealand, they get a really early game and then they basically gather a bunch of data on, hey, how do the people in New Zealand react to this game? And then they look at releasing it to a wider audience. So if there's anyone from New Zealand here, I'm sorry that this is something that you and your country have to bear in the mobile market. Getting any of these flowers, I would consider that mining. Anything that's alive, I can punch. I'm okay with that. I just need to find a village. What's that in the distance? Oh, oh, well, there's a chest here. Oh, this is great, actually. Okay, this seems really good. This seems like potentially very good. Obsidian, I'll take it. I mean, I don't know what else to do. Okay, golden pickaxe. That will be really nice. Plus two attack damage. That's perfect. This is actually really good. This is really, 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 really good. Okay, that makes me very happy. This is the safest place. I heard something that scares me. How do people code like it's so hard? It takes a lot of experience and practice. So it, it it's one of those things. It's learning a new language. So... As far as programming, if anybody is really struggling with it, it makes sense that it's hard at first. It's not um, it's not a, hey, you're dumb or you're just not smart enough to code. It's, you're learning a new language. <gasps> what the crap? Can creepers swim? Coding is something that, uh, like, for me, specifically what I do at my game dev job, I'm a programmer, and so building tools for level designers, building the features of the game, and so it's a... Uh, it's something that it takes a lot of practice. I started learning basics of programming when I was about 12, uh, 10, 11, 12. And then I got into web dev later on and then I started getting more into Unity and more into making faster code. Most of the people I know who've gotten good at programming, they had a project that they wanted to do. If it's just, I want to learn programming, it's a lot harder to get into. But if it's, hey, I want to make a game, ideally something that's a good first step for a game, or I want to make a website, or I want to make a piece of software, a tool to solve a specific problem I have, it's a lot easier to get into it because then you have a clue of to what to search for. How do I make X? How do I do Y? And then you can start Googling answers to your problem. And a lot of programming over time is really, um, it's not, hey, I've memorized everything that I can do. It's knowing what to Google for and then shifting that information to what you're trying to solve. So it might be that, hey, I need to solve a problem. How do I save my game information? Now I could look up, hey, how do I save my game? And that's gonna give me some information, but my own save, my own game's data, what I need to save is going to be different than what somebody else's game needs to save, from what somebody else's game needs to save. And so that's an example of, hey, I need to take this information and then apply it in a way that really works for my project, that really solves my specific problem. There's the myth of the right way to play. And the problem with this is that a lot of people have tried to make games more linear in order to make them more I guess what people find acceptable or good. Games have a contained form of interactivity. So there's different forms of interactivity. One of them is linear. Linear interactivity. One choice. 
you're watching a movie, the movie goes one direction. However, if you compare that to branching interactivity, what this is, is hey, here is how, here are multiple choices. So for example, uh, let's see, multiple choice. So it could be, do you like me? Yes, no. And then we move up to games and the contain interactivity, which is where you have a range of choices. Now, what this essentially means is that rather than it being a yes, no, one, two, three, four, where you could count the choices, there's an infinite number. And so what this can look like is running around in Minecraft. There's so many different places I could go. There is technically an infinite number of choices that I can make. Now it's not unlimited. I can't, unless I'm in creative mode, suddenly fly or um, teleport myself to the end game or things like that outside of cheating outside of creative mode perhaps there are these different things that i'm limited by so i have these contained requirements i'm contained but i have this range and what most games will like to do now is that they like to take all of those choices and say okay so cutscene what does a cutscene do and i want to say cutscenes are not bad it's not disallowed it's just here's something that they do they remove player uh, I'll say, I want to say player agency because that sounds really cool, but remove player choice. During a cutscene, you can't do anything. Sometimes there's exceptions where, like, like for example, you could say, hey, heavy rain, that sort of thing. It's sort of like you have these choices throughout, but you end up removing player choice with cutscenes. And so what a lot of games will do is that they will take the most important parts of their story and they will hide it behind a non-interactive wall. Now, this isn't wrong. It's okay to use non-interactivity, but this can be a crutch. This can be a way to avoid the range, as it may be. And I think that having that range is what makes a lot of games way more replayable. Minecraft, you have this range, and they lean into it. They don't go, oh man, like, you can't do this. They don't go, oh man, like, uh, we have to make the narrative go this way. We have to make sure that the player finds the village and that they have a waypoint marker saying, go to the village. And then when they get there, we need to have a cutscene explaining, you should go into this house and stare at this particular villager in the face uncomfortably. They don't explain that. Instead, you're given those options and you can move within that contained interactivity. And so that's one of the big things that I'm actually hoping to do with this series is to talk about there's plenty of different ways to play the game. And just because you're playing it in a way other than what the developer thought of doesn't mean that it's a wrong way to play the game. In fact, one of my favorite things now, I used to hate when people would play any games that I made in a way that I didn't expect or find a loophole or things like that. Now I kind of love it because you're coming up with new ways to play the game. That means that you like it. That means you're excited about it. You're looking for new things that you can do within it. It's a new world for you. You've made my game, which I thought would go this way, into a sandbox, essentially. And that was something that I saw with puzzles when I was... I, I uh, ended up being one of the top creators in Crazy Machines, too. And one of the things that happened with that was that uh, every time that I'd show my brother a level, he broke it somehow. He always found a way to use fewer items to cheese it, and it upset me a lot. But... What I realized is that him breaking it was just a different way to play, or what I realize now. And certainly there's an extent to where if I'm doing a puzzle, you generally want there to be a specific way to solve a puzzle. But as long as it's within that realm of acceptability, that's cool. Like, it's great. It's great that people are finding new ways to play and interact with the game. So one of the things that I find interesting when I look at Minecraft without mining or crafting is that this game is a crafting survival game. What I've done is... I've just focused in on the survival part. I've changed the focus of the game. And really, something that I think is really cool is that with that, Minecraft does survival well. Here's another thing. Minecraft, I forget if it has a capital C. I don't think it does. Minecraft, let's get rid of that capital C, does crafting well. So here's the thing. Wait, I... Did, Dang it, crafting well. It does survival and crafting well. And what this means is that rather than just saying, hey, you know what, we're going to make sure that you play the game in one way, Minecraft has opened itself up to a lot of different possibilities because the crafting gives you this huge range, but then survival also does. Some people prefer just the crafting, and so there's creative mode for those people. And some people really like the survival part, and they use the crafting as a means of survival. <coughs> and so... This ends up blending together really well. And what Minecraft has done, though, is that they've made both of the parts fun. Rather than saying, here's the fun part of the game, stay in here, stay in line. All the wrong ways to play Minecraft are actually just different ways to play Minecraft. And certainly there's, again, there's break in the game. I'm... What? What was that? You, you can break doors in hard mode. I forgot. Can I sleep? No! I forgot that they can break down doors in hard mode. Uh, anyway, that's what I wanted to say, is that Minecraft does a good job at both of them. 
I think that's one of the great things with playing a game wrong is that you can actually see where weak areas are in a game. You can be like, man, this game really did a great job with this. It did a terrible job with this. When you look at being forced to only place and you cannot remove or do stuff like that, it makes it into this, um, like, no undos. And I see games that have undos, like most games have some sort of undo setup. And when I say undo, I don't mean a literal, like you hit control Z and it undoes what you just did. I mean, like you can place a block and you can destroy it. That's an undo in effect. And so when you have no undos, everything matters a lot more. You have to be a lot more careful and cautious and every choice then matters. So one way to make choices matter is to remove all undos. Because if you can just undo, like for example, in real life, if I say something stupid to somebody, I can't take back those words. They might be gracious and forgive me or whatever, but there is this inability to undo in real life. And in a lot of games, we have that ability and we might save it and then try something and then load it and then try something else and then load it and then try something else. But with Minecraft, there isn't that, hey, just save, load, save, load, save, load, at least as far as I'm aware. Maybe there are mods for that. There's probably mods for that. But um, no one does is it's a way to make meaningful choices and also make it so that everything is in a way stressful. I don't mean that in a bad way. I think there can be a good kind of stress with games, but every choice matters suddenly. And this is a big thing behind like auto saving and making sure that everything that you do persists. A persistent world is one where your choices matter. If you don't have a persistent world, then how can your choices matter? So I think that one of the big things that we can look at in game design is, hey, if I want my choices to matter, I need to make sure that players can't just undo them and wipe them away, whether that's with saving it immediately or whether that is through having it so that uh, the world itself is persistent. There's different things that you can do for that. But I think about just kind of playing through your mistakes and playing through what you do. Given the chance, players will optimize the fun out of any game. And one of the ways that they will do that is by optimizing the fun out of your mistakes. Because mistakes, I think, can be one of the most fun things that you can do in a game or that you can have happen. It's a great idea to look at, hey, what are the things that I want my players to do? And what is the most fun way to play this game? And also just look at, hey, how do I make my choices meaningful? Because meaningful choices can be a lot more fun. If your choice doesn't matter at all, if your input doesn't matter at all, then why would you have input at all? And to me, the whole point of games is that you can have that input and that you can get that reaction. And a lot of games with their kind of force towards linearity are removing what I think makes games great. They're removing that fundamental piece. And you can have different forms of gameplay and there's nothing wrong with having non-interactive to interactive or interactive to non-interactive where you go from gameplay to cutscene to gameplay again. But you lose something if you are constantly removing more interactivity because you just want to tell a linear story. The whole point is that players can make their own stories, players can have their own things going on, and really build out things in a way that the developers didn't expect. If a developer goes, oh, I never thought of that, they've done something right.